Hi, I'm Katarina Pontero with National Underwriter Property and Casualty. Here are the top stories on PC360.com for the week of May 7th to May 11th. The hard market is here, at least according to the Council of Insurance Agents and Brokers President and CEO Ken Karar. According to CIAB's latest quarterly market survey, pricing for small, medium, and large commercial accounts was up an average of about 4.4% during the first quarter. The increase continues the trend. Pricing was up an average of 2.7% on all accounts during 2011's fourth quarter after beginning to edge up nearly 1% in the third quarter last year. The Treasury Department says it sold approximately 188.5 million shares of American International Group common stock this week for about $5.8 billion, reducing the government's ownership stake in the insurance giant to 61%. AIG bought back about $2 billion in the common stock. The Treasury says the offering reduces its investment in AIG to about $30 billion, consisting of approximately 1.06 billion shares of common stock. The sale comes as the Government Accountability Office releases a report saying the federal government could ultimately make more than $15 billion from its investment in AIG. In other AIG news, John Q. Doyle, CEO of Global Commercial Business at Chartis, AIG's property and casualty unit, said this past week in New York that competitors may have erred by not working harder to take AIG's insurance business when it was on the verge of collapse. Doyle says competitors, quote, made a mistake and underestimated how important we were to our customers following the credit crisis in 2008. The Association of Bermuda Insurers and Reinsurers and some insurance companies have publicly renounced their support for the Heartland Institute, a libertarian research group, after the group's ad campaign that compares those who believe in global warming to Unabomber Tom Kaczynski. Similar billboards featuring Charles Manson and Osama bin Laden were planned, but Heartland suspended the ad campaign after widespread condemnation, including strong criticism from its supporters. Besides ABIR, insurers dropping support for Heartland include State Farm, XL Group, Allied World Insurance, and USAA. Florida has effectively agreed to abide by federal flood agency rules that bar new development in floodplains without prior federal approval. The agreement between FEMA, Florida Governor Rick Scott, and Florida's Division of Emergency Management was made before Scott signed HB 503 on May 4th. That bill stipulates that counties and municipalities do not need any state or federal permits as a precondition for processing a development permit. Meanwhile, it looks like Congress will work toward a short-term NFIP reauthorization rather than a five-year extension with reforms. Senator John Tester from Montana said in a hearing this week that Congress won't be able to act on a long-term bill before the current authorization expires on May 31st. 